doing con um, research for um, sheet metal contracting, we're doing research for mechanical, we're doing research for distribution. And above all, we have done the previous research for automotive, for banking, and we rely on all that research to um, help convince the CEOs that there is a better mousetrap for them to make money. Yeah. Tell our viewers how middle management benefits from working with MCA. The, uh, the advantage that the middle management has in this case is since the uh, top management and leadership has to concentrate on the future and the, current, the operators are concentrated on today, middle management becomes almost a frozen middle. We help them to be the bridge between current operators and the, f and the managers who have to concentrate on the future. So they become the facilitators between the top management mm -hmm. and, the, and the workers. It's like the White House staff and the bureaucracy and the president. Exactly. They should help communication and not block it. That's, that's, that's you know uh, that better than I am. Yeah, do I ever. <laughs> now, what is involved in, in helping companies build their own operational models? Um, initially, what happens after, again, after the assessment, we then take the top managers to about one or two day retreat to, uh, to an offsite. And we bring the principals and help them build the operational models, the skeleton, the outside walls. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we create the uh, cross-functional teams, which again, the success factors for Nissans, Toyotas of the world, mm -hmm. GMs of the world mm -hmm. are because of the cross-functional teams. And then we teach the cross-functional teams the principles of the system design, principles of learning organization, principles of waste reduction, and that's how they, uh, they actually did. The process of transformation both happens individually and by the organization. We treat the organization as an entity, and it could take anywhere between two to five years right. for a transformation. Right now, can companies take these processes and models that you create and, and easily implement them? The, uh, the models need to be developed by every location, yeah. but the principles, yes. Mm -hmm. I distinguish between the two. Principle, as I said, is like force is equal mass times acceleration. You can use it in an airplane, in a bicycle, or in a car. So if the top management understands the principles, yes, they can apply it across the board. But the models, they have to be very careful. We have made that mistake pre previously that we allowed the companies to transform models from one location to another, from one army base to the next, or from one bank to the next. That fails because the Doesn't people fit, in huh? right, right, that uh, people in that location have to see their signature right. on designing the models. That's good. Now, uh, do you stay with them to, to get this part of the process going? Yes. The fir first uh, couple years is very difficult. Right. It's an embryo case. You have to constantly work on the management to start trusting their mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. that the people have the solutions. We don't have the solutions. Mm -hmm. Their people have the solution. To start trusting their people to build the models. The issue is, is going to be, historically, you just cannot empower people. Empowerment is not real because how could you empower anybody without the information okay so what we work with the people with the with the worker bees literally is that for them to recognize that their segment of the work is not the only segment okay what is the ripple effect of yeah. what happens from one segment to the next segment and my own experience in manufacturing suggests that the hardest nut to crack is the engineer absolutely He's the fellow that resists uh, change uh, doggedly. Absolutely, because he doesn't see his input in it. Exactly. No. Get his exactly. input in it and he will do it. That's right. Now, how does your model improve morale? Well, the, uh, you'd be surprised. The, um, again, this bank example I brought in, uh, what happens even if you end up reducing your workforce, which most cases doesn't happen because you increase your throughput, you increase your sales. Mm -hmm. Now people see really what they are doing daily right. is, is what is coming from them themselves. Now, even if it means just one piece of one process is somebody's idea, okay, mm -hmm. because that's the solution, right. they, that would improve the morale of the... Uh, Very good. Uh, now, so. can companies quantify an increase in job satisfaction? Is it measurable? It is a, it's a measurable issue. And above all, what the companies quantify is primarily on profitability. And, mm -hmm. you know, if the company mm -hmm. makes happy, as Jack Welch again repeats, everybody is happy. Mm -hmm. That's typically what happens. Through these processes, 20, 30% increase on gross profit is very normal. 
for most mm -hmm. companies that we operate. So, and that translates into bonuses. That translates into a happier communities and societies that they work with because now they can actually go out there and spend mm -hmm. some money on them. Now, at this juncture, Perry, uh, we talk about the future, the near-term future. What do you see in your industry, your business, uh, over the next year or two? Well, um, if I may uh, cite Dr. Drucker here, the future of the industry, industries, is going to be that not every company is going to be able to afford their own cross-functional specialties, specialists, literally. Um, we, we will be serving the industry to do research and show them if, if it works in automotive, it will work in banking. If it works in banking, mm -hmm. it will work in construction. The issue is going to be translation of it. For example, theory of constraint for manufacturing works great, but how do you translate it to banking? How do you translate it to, uh, to hospitals? You know, there are, our inventories in this country have been one of the major reasons for our economy growth in the last 10, 20 years. A reduction of the inventories. There are a few industries that we have a tremendous amount of inventory. Healthcare is one of them. Yeah. The healthcare inventory is killing us, literally. Construction is another one. Banking. All these soft industry that we have really not paid attention to uh, are going to be the driver of our economy for the next 20 to 30 years mm -hmm. if we can reduce the inventories just like we did in manufacturing across right. the United States. Right. Well, we don't hear enough of that uh, today with all our complaints about this or that. Uh, right. We're not looking at the fact that uh, internal improvement, research and development, right. investment in the future is what has kept us competitive. Absolutely. All right. Now, unfortunately, we're at the time where we have to draw this very insightful discussion to a conclusion. But before doing so, Perry, I want to thank you for your very knowledgeable contribution today. Thank you very much. Good. And thank you for watching. Until next time for World Business Review, I'm Alexander Hayes.